Hi, this is Natalia from IntelliCAD Technology Consortium, and today I want to review major additions in ActCAD 2019. The first one is the fully redesigned Hatch and Gradient dialog. Now the whole dialog is separated into two areas. One on the right side is common for both Hatch and Gradient, and the part on the left side contains two tabs, Hatch and Gradient. Let's start with the Gradient tab. This is the main addition in this dialog. You can choose one or two colors to be used for a gradient pattern. There are nine gradient patterns you can choose from. In the orientation box, you can use the center checkbox to center the gradient pattern. If you keep it unchecked, the pattern will be shifted up and to the left. You also can specify the angle for the gradient pattern. To apply all gradient settings to an entity, just press the Select Entities button, select the necessary entity, and press the OK button. Let's call the hatch command once again and review changes for the hatch tab and the common area. You can choose a pattern from the named list or click the browse button to select a pattern from the hatch pattern dialog box. Or click on a preview window to see this dialog. Also, you can choose a color for hatch lines and hatch background color. The angle and scale box didn't change much. The only addition is the related to paper space checkbox. It's only available for named layouts and scaling the hatch pattern relative to the units defined for paper space when checked. The double checkbox is the former cross hatch checkbox. Using the new hatch origin box, you can specify a new hatch origin or use a default one. The options box is an extended version of hatch attributes. Only annotative and associative checkboxes are from the old dialog. The Create Separate Hatches checkbox allows you to create a separate hatch or gradient when more than one close boundary is selected. You can select the order of the hatch or gradient related to the boundary, layer of the hatches or gradients, and the transparency of the hatches or gradients. For the Specify Value option, use the slider or enter the transparency value. The Inherit Properties button is the Copy Hatch Properties in the old version. Now it has options to choose a regions. The boundaries box has new additions as well. Now you can remove a boundary from the selection set, select the hatch or gradient that should be surrounded with a polyline or region, or view currently selected entities in the drawing. That was a quick review of the hatch and gradient dialog. Let's move to the eTransmit function. eTransmit packages a set of files for internet transmission. Before this command was implemented, the only way to move drawings from one computer to another was the mail command. It's still very useful when you need to send a single drawing. But when you need to transfer more than one drawing or drawing related files such as font files or external references, eTransmit command is the best way to do it. Click the Application button. Select the Publish menu to access the eTransmit button, or just type eTransmit in the command line. The eTransmit dialog box appears where you can see a list of all files related to the current drawing. You can review the list of files in hierarchical format or in a table. You can mark and unmark the unnecessary files. You also can add more files using the Add Files button. In the preview window, you can see a preview for selected file. Using the Transmittal Setups button, you can manage transmittal setups. Let's review settings of a standard transmittal setup. In the Modified Transmittal Setup dialog box, you can select the transmittal package type, file format, location for the transmittal package, how to name packages, path options, add actions and include fonts or unloaded file references. Using the View Report button, you can review report information that will be included with the transmittal. One more important addition I would like to mention is the Leaders panel on the Annotate tab. Let's start with the Multi-Leader option. Basically, a multi-leader consists of an arrow, a line, a horizontal landing, and a multi-line text object. Or you can choose spline instead of a line segment and block instead of multi-line text. In the multi-leader style drop-down list, you can see all the available multi-leader styles. To create one, use the multi-leader style manager dialog box. You also can use it to modify and delete named multi-leader styles. On the leader format tab, you can select type of leader line, color, line type, line weight, symbol for arrowhead, its size, and a break size. Let's move to the Leader Structure tab, where you can specify the maximum number of the points for a leader line and angles of the first and the second line segments. 
You can specify if you need a horizontal landing line to the multi-letter content, and you can set a fixed distance for the multi-letter landing line. And you also can control scaling of the multi-letter in the scale box. And the last tab in the multi-letter style manager is the content tab. It's different for block, M text, and non options. If you would like to have a block as a multi-letter content, you can specify the way the block is attached to the multi-letter, color of block content, and a scale. When you create a multi-letter, you can attach letter lines using the Add Multi-Letter button. You can also remove letter lines using the Remove Multi-Letter button. Multi-letters can be collected into a column and displays the result with a single letter line. It's only available for multi-letters with block content. You also can easily align several multi-letters using the Align Multi-Letter button. The M text in place editor has some additions too, and the main one is a paragraph panel where you can set spacing between lines using the Align Spacing button. You also can create listed text, all numbers or letters in a row, or you can start a new list in the middle of text using the Begin button, or merge two lists using the Continue button. Paragraph justification options are available now too. The context menu also has two new items. The first one is the Combined Paragraph Context menu item, which combines selected paragraphs into a single paragraph. And the second one is the ability to convert a field to text using the Convert Field to Text menu item. And at the end of this video, I would like to review some commands from the new Express Tools tab. The first one is the Multiline Style Manager. It allows you to create or modify multiline styles. In the cap box, you can choose whether to include a line to cap the start or end of multiline, an arc for outer lines, an arc for inner lines, an angle line to cap the start or end line. When display joints checkbox selected, a line will be included at joints of multilines. In the elements box, you can add a new element or delete one. Changing an offset field value, you can set the distance to offset the element or line from the previous element. And all of these changes will be reflected in the list of the offset, color, and line type combinations assigned to each element. Also on the Tools panel, two new selection options were added. First one is the Get Selection option. Using this option, you can select all entities in a drawing that match both the layer of the entity and its style. Second one is the Select Similar option. This is an extended version of Get Selection. You can customize a set of properties to match in the Select Similar Settings dialog. And the last addition I would like to mention is the Quick Leader command and related commands from the Dimension panel. The Quick Leader command draws a leader line with an annotation. There are three commands available for a created leader. Attach leader to annotation connects leader to annotation. Global Detach Leader from Annotation detaches all leaders in the selection from their annotations. Global Attach Leader to Annotation connects all leaders in the selection to their annotations. This is all I have for now. Thank you for watching this video.